Hi everyone, my name is Alfonso Pulido and while I'm hunting for a job, I wanted to share with you a little tutorial on financial modeling for leases. In this video, I'm not going to talk about journal entries, but about how to properly reflect your lease agreement in your financial statements. As you know, leases used to be of balance sheet items, spends as cash float out. But with the introduction of IFRS 16, they are not accounted both as intangible assets and debt-like items. P&L wise, the cost of the lease is not accounted for as operating expense, but it is now split between EBIT and financial result. You might be wondering why this is important for your financial model. Well, because of two reasons, income tax and model tracking. Firstly, the lease expenses will be spread throughout the uh, lease term differently, affecting your tax calculation. And secondly, you'll need a set of properly populated financial statements to be able to track the project actuals against what you initially projected. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so we are gonna start with the implicit discount rate. This is gonna be the cost of your lease. It can be either obtained in the lease agreement you may have with your lessor or in, if not explicitly stated, you can, uh, you can use the marginal cost of debt for the firm you will be modeling for. Then, escalation factor, because we are going to escalate the rent, the lease installment, let's assume 3%. Then the term, uh, 7 years or 7 periods. And the rental payment for the period, it's gonna be 6,000. Okay, so a little bit of formatting here before we start. And then the period counter so spread across to 10 periods in case we want to change the 7 periods in the inputs then turn flag you may be noticing I've got the Excel in Spanish, but the Y should uh, should be an AND formula, just the conditional. Oh, I've got an error here. Yeah, because it's not comma, it's semicolon. I'm using the Spanish version. So this is as simple as flagging when we are within the lease term. Okay, so let's continue with the escalation with the factors. First one is gonna be the escalation, which is just one times the escalation rate to the power of the period so let me anchor that and then to the power I always forget where this key is in this keyboard ah here it is okay So if I spread it across, here it is, the escalation factor, and then we are going to need the implicit discount factor. It's quite easy as well, it's just the inverse of what we just did for the escalation factor. So it's 1 divided by times the 
implicit discount rate to the power of the relevant period. A little bit of formatting here as well to see a couple of decimal points spread across. Um, here we are. Oops, I missed one. Okay, so continue. To continue with, well, we we need the rental real rental payment, which will be six thousand, and then the nominal rental payments. This will be a CC as taking the rental payment from the inputs above times the term flag. Spread across, and we've got. 6,007 times and then the nominal rental payments will be just as easy as multiplying the real value times the escalation factor we've got above a little bit of formatting here as well and here we are <coughs> Next thing we are going to do is discounting the nominal rental payments. So we've got the discounted nominal rental payments. Again, it's really easy. We take the nominal rental payment times the implicit discount factor. Uh, here we are. Little bit of format in. The sum of all discounted nominal rental payments is what is going to be called the right of use value or the present value of the future rental payments. So this is the total value of your list, of your right to use whatever you please. So let's uh, get started with the piano. So at the end of the day, this is building up uh, both PNL and both a PNL and a balance sheet. So. So you'll need to depreciate that your right of use, which will be your asset. So to make things easy, just assume a straight line depreciation throughout the list term, which is seven years. And here we are. A little bit of formatting as well. And then the, oh, let's place a total here. That's right. Then the second item in your PNL account is going to be. Oops. Yeah, well, let me point out this is. This is going to be the EBIT, and the implicit interest is going to hit the financial result total in your PNL account. So let's leave the implicit interest uh, by now, um, but get to the profit of the, of the year. Since this is a quite short PNL account, it's just the addition of the two above. And that's pretty much it. So let's get started with the balance sheet. So in the assets side, you'll have the right of use, which is this 
39,919 you've got above. So the right of use is just this value and it will be the same value all across. Then you'll have the related depreciation on cumulative basis because it's a balance sheet item. So what we have to add Ah, in negative, of course. Is the position. So that's gonna be your non current assets. It's a pretty simple balance sheet. And as current assets, you're you're gonna have the cash, and it's gonna be always negative because it's uh, the single cash you're gonna have is a payment to the to the lesser. Has to be on cumulative terms because we are talking about a balance sheet item as well. So. Here we are, nice and easy. So total assets would be the addition of the non-current assets plus the cash, which is the only current asset that you're gonna have. Okay, so in the equity and liability side, you're gonna find profit of the year which is gonna be negative because the single item you've got is a lease payment this balance sheet doesn't have any revenue so it's gonna look negative and then the return earnings which is simply just the accumulation of the profit of the year. A little bit of formatting here as well. Spread across and here we are. And then you need the debt. which is a representation of the future payments you're gonna make to your lesser. So that's the initial value. And let's uh, do the tricky bit, the implicit interest. So you take the opening balance, which is the balance from the closing balance from the pre uh, previous period, times the implicit interest rate or implicit discount rate all across and here we are okay so how is your debt gonna change over time you'll have to add the implicit interest and take out the nominal payments all the spread, spread across. Oh. oh, something's wrong here. What did it go wrong? Well, we'll fix that later. So, to finish your balance sheet, yeah, you've got equity and liabilities, which is just the addition of the three items you've got, you've got above uh, 
Maybe again a little bit of form again. Okay, as you can see, the first period the balance sheet is all square, but not for the rest. Where did it go wrong? Well, it's the control line, the all a square line. So what happened here is something with the debt. I didn't fix currently well not fixing but taking the, the right cell so instead of taking that one above if I take the one to the left and spread this formula across bang all our periods are square so this is basically it. if you like it please uh, spread it out uh, give me a like and uh, well happy to share the this uh, little model whoever requested it uh, just reach me uh, through linkedin and i'll be able to just send this across to whoever wants to to have a look and play with it thanks for watching